It has now been more than three years and new AI technologies still keep popping up. But honestly, it's only very recently that AI went from hype to actually becoming really useful. You can now build complex AI agent workflows to handle work that previously required human labor. You can train and fine tune your own custom AI models to carry out very specialized tasks. You can even prototype, code and do the work of a small development team all by yourself. There's a lot of opportunity here, but we also need to be realistic. All of this is still very early stage. And while the interest in replacing human work with AI is sky high, there's still quite a barrier to entry. But the good part about that is that it's creating business opportunities for you who know how to handle AI. In this video, I will give you five realistic ideas on how to monetize your AI agents, tools and expertise in 2025. No bullshit, real ideas with real potential and breakdowns of how to carry them out. Let's go. It's pretty clear that we're entering a phase where AI agents will start taking over a lot of the manual work people used to do using traditional SaaS software. Early adopters are already jumping onto this as we speak and it opens the doors for a lot of business to be made. So here's the first idea. Selling AI agent workflows. The most sophisticated tool to build AI agents right now is N8N. N8N is an automation tool kind of like Zapier and Make. You can build complex workflows and integrations with any tool that has an API. And the best part is, N8N has one of the best, if not the best AI agent implementation on the market right now. Which means that you can build real, sophisticated, agentic workflow using models from OpenAI, Claude, DeepSeek and many others. And here's where the business opportunity comes in. These workflows often get very complex and they're pretty time consuming to put together. There are a ton of great tutorials on YouTube on how to do this, but I know for a fact that many businesses, especially small businesses, would be happy to pay for a complex workflow that has been already crafted and that they can incorporate into their own workflows directly. And there are two ways you can do this. The first one is by selling workflow templates. Let's say you have spent hours creating a really useful and valuable workflow in N8N and you want to offer this to your users. The most straightforward way to monetize this is to export the finished workflow file directly from N8N and then let people buy access to this file for a one-time payment. You can put up a simple website using a payment system like Stripe and then send the user the workflow file in an email after they purchase. People have been doing this with Notion templates, Figma templates, Webflow templates and so on. It's pretty much the same principle. The other one is by selling access to workflow runs. In N8N, you can expose your workflow through a webhook. So your workflow can be triggered by another N8N workflow or another system entirely for that matter. In this way, people can call your workflow through N8N's API and get the final result or output, but they don't have to worry about the details of the workflow itself. So after the user purchases access, you simply send them this URL. Now they can add your workflow as a tool for their own AI agents to use. They can simply call this as they would with any other API. And if you want to protect it to make sure only paying users have access, N8N got you covered you can add authentication directly to the webhook node that triggers the workflow. Now, with this method, the workflow is running on your N8N account. And if it's using AI, it's consuming tokens from your accounts. So since this is consuming resources on your end, it might make sense selling access to this workflow as a subscription or a per call basis rather than a one-time purchase. Both of these are great ways to monetize your N8N work. Now, selling AI agents is a brand new opportunity since they haven't been around for very long. But there's another opportunity that has been around almost forever, and that's selling knowledge. You can sell info products, paid courses, coaching, masterclasses, and so on. The idea of selling knowledge isn't new at all. But AI is giving you a very new format and a new medium to do it. Specifically, I'm talking about knowledge-based AI chatbots. Consider this example. You want to learn how to run paid ads on Facebook. You now have a few options. You can learn it by yourself, or you can lean on the knowledge of someone who has the right credentials or expertise. You might join the master classes offered by Ben Heath Media, or you might buy the Maker Ads Guide, which is a paid course. Both are great. But imagine this. 
instead of buying access to a course, you get access to a chatbot similar to ChatGPT that was trained specifically on the knowledge from and by your favorite author on a specific topic. You can now ask this chatbot specific questions and it will use its knowledge to help and guide you in the process using expert knowledge, but with the context of your specific case. This could be offered as an addition to a paid course or as a standalone product. Now, let's flip it around. If you're that expert or you have access to expert knowledge, then you can offer this specialized AI chatbot to your audience. Here's exactly how I would set this up. I would use a tool called 8Base to create the chatbot and manage all the knowledge. With 8Base, you can create and manage a knowledge base by using public knowledge like websites or YouTube videos, but you can also upload documents like PDF files or manage your knowledge base directly in 8Base's rich FAQ editor. This makes it easy to create, manage, and update a large knowledge base for your AI chatbot. Now you can train on this data. Give the AI chatbot access to the knowledge and put this chatbot on your website behind a paywall for paying users. What you should never do is giving your knowledge base to a custom GPT in a system prompt. It is super easy to trick the AI into spitting out the entire system prompt, which you definitely want to avoid. Large language models also tend to perform pretty bad on large contexts. 8Base doesn't have any system prompt. Instead, it is actively querying the specific data it needs for each chat message based on what is being asked using a technology called RAG. With 8Base, you can even inspect each conversation, see which knowledge it retrieves and correct it on the fly for a more accurate reply in future conversations. It's a really solid approach. And full disclosure, 8Base is one of the SaaS products my team and I run, so I am a little biased here, but personally, I have not seen any other tool handle a knowledge base and a UI-based rack system as well as 8Base does. And let me just blow your mind for a second. Right now, you can buy lifetime access to 8Base for a single one-time purchase. That means that you can invest in 8Base once and use it to sell your knowledge-based AI chatbots recurringly to your clients. Now, there are some limits to how many monthly messages the chatbot can handle with this deal, but if you can stay within those limits, there is potential for a massive ROI if you use 8Base for your business. Oh, and by the way, in this lifetime deal, you also get access to three other tools, all included. Go to founderstack.pro and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so far we've considered offering AI built around existing tools, but what if you could train or fine tune your very own AI model and offer access to it directly using an API? Let's talk about selling access to a custom AI model. You probably already know that you can download and use open source models like Flux, Stable Diffusion, DeepSeek, and many others. They're available to download on Hugging Face. You can now specialize these models by using a technique called fine tuning. Perhaps you want Flux, which is an image generation model to output images of a very specific kind. For instance, you can fine tune a Flux model to create HDRIs for a 3D software like Blender. Or you can fine tune it to create vivid, high contrast YouTube thumbnails that will get more clicks. Or you can fine tune DeepSeek to reply in a specific way or on a specific format. This kind of fine-tuned version of an open source base model is called a LoRa model. And getting a LoRa model really good might take a lot of tries, a lot of experimenting, tweaking, tuning, and depending on what you're fine-tuning for, might require specific expertise and knowledge. So again, if you have that knowledge and you have managed to train a really good LoRa model, you can absolutely charge people to use this model. The best way to do this is to use a platform called Replicate. With Replicate, you can deploy, fine-tune, and run AI models at scale. You can do the fine-tuning jobs directly on Replicate itself, or you can upload your LoRa models to Replicate and expose it through Replicate's API. And similar to the first example with N8N, also here, you can charge users to use this API. You can either provide an API key to Replicate's API directly, or you can develop your own proxy API that you can put in front of Replicate. Both ways would enable users to run your LoRa model without neither you or the users having to deal with complex infrastructure and GPU, hardware, scaling, and so on and so on. I think this is an excellent opportunity to monetize AI.
Now, let's talk about a way you can use AI indirectly to get better results with your products, services, or to help monetize something that would otherwise be considered just a fun hobby project. If you've been active on Twitter in the past few weeks, you might have stumbled on this expression called vibe coding, which basically means using cursor or windsurf to do all the coding for you based on a vibe. This resulted in some really interesting project, mostly small indie games created with 3JS and Cursor. Peter Levels was one of the first to create a small game and within just a few days, he was already making tens of thousands of dollars in ads. But a bunch of other people followed up. This guy, Nicola, created a small sailing game called Vibe Sail. And also here, advertisers jumped on board and generated a fair amount of revenue for this guy. In fact, I bought a Founder Stack banner myself for this game and it's actually producing clicks. Not long after, people introduced the notion of Vibe Marketing and Vibe Designing and Vibe entrepreneuring and people started having all kinds of different takes on this and a bunch of people praised this new approach about vibing everything. And I just want to make it clear, I don't think that's a good idea at all. I know some people give the impression that that's all they're doing and that it's all fun and play, but I firmly believe that being structured, organized and very intentional with what you're doing will by the end of the day create the best outcome. However, I still think we can use the concept of vibing to put new ideas to the test. I think it's an excellent approach for prototyping and testing the waters. I can totally see myself vibe coding a simple new product, then vibe designing some quick ads and see if I can get some interest. And if something catches on, you can then switch vibing to a more intentional approach. Finally, let's talk about the last and most obvious way to monetize your AI solutions. Some businesses don't want to buy your workflow files. They don't want to access your knowledge so they can learn. They don't even want to buy access to an ABI endpoint so they can consume your AI directly. They literally want you to come and set everything up for them without having to do or learn anything. There are a lot of businesses right now who totally get the point. They know that getting into AI and automation is the way to get a competitive edge and to future-proof their businesses. They just don't have a clue how. And an obvious way for you to do business is by running an AI automation agency that offers businesses to implement it for them. Just a few years ago, you heard people talk about AI automation agencies and it kind of wasn't something people took too seriously. That has definitely changed. Take a look at what Liam Otley is doing. He is one great example. If you know how to set up complex automation, if you know how to fine tune and create LoRa models, and if you don't mind working with clients directly, then consider offering your expertise as an AI consultant or through your own AI automation agency. In the next two years, I think we're going to see a ton of new opportunities and a lot of amazing new ways to do business that's gonna be different from the traditional SaaS model. These were five ideas on how to turn AI into an offer, but another totally overlooked area is using AI for internal operations to run a more lean and efficient startup. And in this video, I will show you eight AI tools I use to run my business. Go watch this video next. I will see you over there. Take care.